catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com. Whatever your thoughts on Wednesday are, I give it all that you've got. Be the best you can be. Don't waste this day. No. Enjoy it. Happy Wednesday. If something from Tuesday is bothering you or if you're worried about Thursday, this Wednesday, write this down. Don't let yesterday or tomorrow ruin your today. I'll be here till about midday and it'll be great if you stayed with me till then. Tell me what you think on WhatsApp, text or send a voice note on 913 558 1766. If you're texting from outside Nigeria, please add the plus 234. Yeah, you can also follow the conversation on social media on Twitter and on Facebook. We're at Africa Tech Radio, while on Instagram, we're at A Tech Radio. So every day here at 9 a.m. GMT plus one, three things I dig into the rubbles of history and tell you what is really good to know from history today in tech and then i get into the gist for the day and then i help you learn a word in tech every day that's exactly what i do and then somewhere around the corner you wouldn't expect it but i'll be throwing around some very juicy weird I didn't make this up. Tech news. Something you've never heard before. And you would think when you hear it that, you know, I most likely made it up. But I can assure you. They always say, are you sure you didn't make it up? I can assure you I never make any of that or those up. Welcome and sit tight, guys. The show just started. The man, Tony. The show, Tony's deck side. You're welcome. Well, if they say this is the greatest show, who am I to say no? Come on, I will not do that. This is the greatest show. Welcome to Tony Side. if you're just joining in. Okay, the past is a stepping stone and not a millstone. And the sooner you realize that, the better it is for you. Today, as we step into the rubbles of history, we learn and pick a thing or two. This day, February 8th in the year 2005, Google Maps was launched to the public by Google. Yes, if you don't know what Google Maps is, okay, Google Maps is a web mapping platform and also a consumer application that is offered by Google. What does it offer? Satellite imagery, aerial photography, uh, street maps, 360 interactive panoramic view of the streets, that's like street view, real-time traffic conditions, route planning for traveling by foot, car, bike, air, and public transportation. Let me explain very quickly. Now, satellite imagery is the image of a particular country. It plays from the satellite outside space, right? So you can zoom into your village or to a country or anywhere from that. You don't need to be in the place. So I can zoom into California, a particular road in California. Aerial photography makes it able for you from, say, the bird's eye view or from the eye view of a plane across right you can zoom out and see like a particular area it's like aerial photography it's what they do when they're doing movies yeah that you see they see from oh there's a and yeah exactly street maps is it shows you the, the map every street the map of a street or streets connected 360 interactive panoramic view of the street means you can turn all the way around and all the way right back exactly and real-time traffic conditions so if there's going to be traffic on this road it shows red on your map and it says oh this traffic you're going to have four hours delay on this route or not and then route planning if you want to move by foot or by car or by bike or you know they just tell you by foot it's going to take you three hours to get here by bike it's going to take you 20 minutes by car it's going to take you this number of time and also public transportation i think train to here and then as of 2020 google maps was being used by over 1 billion people every month around the world trust me before i knew of google maps i used to have a very very big issue (laughs) with going to places but these days right i usually don't like not anymore how did google maps start it started as a c plus plus desktop program developed by two brothers lars and jens erasmussen at where two technologies and in october 2004 
Google acquired the company, converted it into a web application, added some other things like geospatial data visualization. They bought a company to that. Um, they added real-time traffic analyzer. And then on this day, they launched officially Google Maps. Exactly. Also, very important to note is Google Maps for Android and iOS devices were released in 2008. That's later on in September 2008. And features such as GPS turn-by-turn -turn navigation, along with dedicated parking assistant features were also added. And in 2013, it was found to be the world's most popular smartphone app with over 54% of global smartphone owners using this particular app. Let's dig deeper, deeper into the rubbles of history today. What should we learn from this? So the two things here, I think. Um, the first is it was developed by someone else, Lars and Jens Rasmussen, and then it was acquired by Google. If you are someone like Lars and Jens, it's important to know that every idea you have, you may not be the one to see it get into its full potential right you birthed the idea but it's possible that you may need to hand over that idea to someone else to develop and make better mm -hmm. and then for a company like if you're you know like in the space of like google it's more like you would need other people you do not have all the ideas especially when it comes to like starting something innovative afresh you may not have all the ideas. You may need to also get other people in, you know, like get other ideas, borrow ideas to add to the one you have and then make other people's ideas better, right? It might not just be taking it, but making people's ideas better. So those are the two things we can learn from that. First, you need someone else to make your idea better. And second is you need to make other people's ideas way better. So go hard and go well today. Choose us for 100% tech. Africa Tech Radio. Okay, chairman. And this, trust me, is the chairman. I mean, the massive internet collaboration called 24 Hours in Cyberspace, yes, is till date the largest one day online event ever. Ever. It was on this day in 1996 that it took place. It was so early in the history of mainstream internet that i don't even think <laughs> i don't even think i you know i had anything to do with it and this is not to say that gen z because some people feel like it's not you know this is not to say i'm gen z but you know i live it at that point so the photographer called rick smollen and jennifer erwitt tom melker sammy arora and clement mock were the people who headed this event the project brought together the world's top a thousand photographers editors programmers and interactive designers to create a digital time capsule of online life and it was only going to be available for 24 hours 24 hours in cyberspace was now because you know it just happened for a day it was an online project it took place on the then active cyber24.com although right now it is still online but at a mirror website that's been maintained by georgia tech at that time, it was built the largest collaborative internet event ever. It involved thousands of photographers from all over the world, including 150 of the world's top photojournalists. What was the goal? The goal was not to show pictures of websites and computer monitors and just anything that, you know, would just show pictures of the internet life or what the internet was at that time rather the goal was for images of people whose lives were affected by the use of the growing internet to be showcased photographs were sent digitally to editors who were working real time to choose the best pictures to put on the project's website the website received more than 4 million hits in the 24 hours that the project was active. Now, the tech infrastructure of the project was provided by a startup company, spin-off from Apple Computer called NetObjects, and it was founded by Samir Arora, David Kleinberg, Clement Mock, and Sal Arora. NetObjects was the first to create the tech that would enable a team of the world's top picture editors and writers to become instant web page designers. So what did he let them do? What they are best at, edit and write and automatically generate finished sophisticated web pages that millions of people were able to see only minutes after they were designed. Three million people clicked onto the 24 hour site and the buzz of publicity surrounding 24 hours in the cyberspace project helped NetObject raised $4.4 million. 
in venture capital. This project reportedly cost as much as $5 million and was funded with assistance from 50 companies, mostly in form of loans, loans of computer hardware and tech experts to run the project. And some major supporters that were listed, Adobe Systems, Sun Microsystems and Kodak, like three of the major ones that were actually listed in a bid to tell our stories. It's really, really, really important. Now, this reminds me of a thought shared by someone i think i'll just let you listen to it instead of sharing those thoughts myself so please take a listen we have less people contributing to wikipedia from africa compared to other parts of the world and when you look at it it is african stories that are being written so if they're not written then we're not represented well it might be written but written by someone else who is not from africa so we need to write our own stories information about africa is missing our stories are not going to be heard so we need to contribute to wikipedia so that our stories are out there and also to preserve our heritage as africans africa tech radio so it's really important that we do this wikipedia right now is about the largest resource and we can tell our stories on the largest and we can also create spaces platforms where we continuously tell our stories and that's exactly why we're here africa tech radio to tell the stories in this space use tech to tell all kinds of stories that affects us as humans as africans it's really important that we stamp our feet and make our own mark in the history of storytelling we are great storytellers but i think we're beginning to you know how you're like trying to be like someone else and then you lose yourself in trying to exactly i think that's what we're doing and when we take a look at the past right we may not have all of our past on the internet right like history so we can dig in and find precious things that we can rely on as motivation for the future but we can start sowing those things now the past is always a place to learn from and not a place to live in we cannot return to our past no we can only move forward but then we can learn from the rubbles of history of Africa and how great we have been and how we have faltered and fallen a lot of times but have continued to rise, we have continued to shine. Brighter days ahead, surely. I'll let Salty Soul tell the story better in a song, yeah? You're listening to Tony's Tech Side. Yep, so learn a tech word today. What's our tech word for the day? Simple file yes oh have you sent over that file oh yeah I, i'm expecting the audio file from him oh he sent a file that's too large for me so what files are we expecting today oh please send it send the file via bluetooth oh okay you've sent it via email did you attach the file file yes simple terms a container in a computer system for storing information you know how you have your house and you have sugar you have salt you have water you have anything rice gary whatever millet and then you buy them Mm -hmm. you get them from someone and you're like how can i store and keep safe keep this thing i have then you go all out and you get a container that is that can preserve whatever you have and you put it into the container you cover it you seal it up and then whenever you need it you go into the container some people usually mark things in their houses you know they name them they put name tags on them so they can remember the content of this particular container and it's the same thing that happens when you're selling something you know because this isn't just you know for you personally if you're selling something where yeah, you have a service you know you have a, something where this thing is in right especially if you're selling not services but like you can have files like services but then you send something that is concrete so you put in something and you package it that's the file you're putting it in a file students documents you have your documents right for processing whatever you want to process for those who still deal deal with documents and you put it in a file and then they tell you submit your file Mm -hmm. so files used in computers are similar in this feature to that of you know paper documents like i just said used in library in office faces and things like that they're different types of files when i was giving the example at first you know i said you know audio file this this you know attach it so there are text files there are data files 
there are directory files, binary and graphic files. And these different types of files store different types of information. In a computer operating system, files can be stored on devices, on drives, any other storage device. Yeah? In most operating systems, a file must have a unique name within a given file directory. So if you're putting it under music, it must have a name under music. If you're putting it under videos, you must have a name under videos. However, while creating a file name, certain characters are considered illegal and cannot be used. A file name is a name with a suffix, which is also known as a file extension, DOC, XLS, Excel, documents. The file extension is two to four characters following the period in the complete file name. The file extension helps in identifying the type of file, the file format, and the attributes associated with the file so the computer can read. And you also can know that, oh, if it's an XLS file, if it's a DOC file, you know, you just know. Mm -hmm. If it's DOC X or DOC something, you just know. And most modern computer systems provide security or protection measures against corruption of the file or the file being damaged. The data contained in the file could range from system generated information to user specified information. And then file management is usually done with the help of the operating system or third party tools or done manually at times with, you know, the help of the user. Um, The basic operations that can be performed on a file are you can create a new file, you can modify, you know, the data or the attributes of a file, you can read a, a data from the file you can open the file in order to make the content available to other programs you can write data on the file you can close a file end the operation of a file in order to read or to change data in a file you need specific software associated with the file extension Mm -hmm. so i hope you've learned a thing or two today Tell us what you have learned today from Learn a Tech Word today on at Africa Tech Radio on Twitter and on Facebook and at A Tech Radio on Instagram. Yes. From now on, know that you have learned something. Use the word as often as possible. Try to intentionally associate it with things that are real life things and don't just let it go like that. When I return, I will be sharing juicy tech stories across the continent of things that impact Africa too. So don't go anywhere at all. This is Tony's Tech Side, Africa Tech Radio. Africa Tech Radio. At Africa Tech Radio. We believe that information is at the heart of development. Get it. Get informed. Africa Tech Radio. Okay, so I played this because you wouldn't really understand it, but two big cats in the wild wild west of tech are taking a swipe at themselves and i'm talking google and microsoft they are part of the party called the big five in tech global big five in tech but they're taking swipes at themselves and you know what is causing this they're hustling hustling on the streets of ai and we haven't even started talking about the metaverse and those who are hustling on that street i mean meta and google and the rest of them the big boys field this is the field of ai and whoever gets it right first whoever gets it that's it it set you off a decade ahead of others Mm -hmm. you know i told you this week that google announced bard i think that was just yesterday or two days ago and i told you also that microsoft had an event a day after google announced theirs and i think google also has an event too but then microsoft has unleashed chat gpt ai in binge edge browser to challenge google this was big yesterday a new version of the binge search engine binge is just like the google search engine remember google is the company and google is also a search engine and the edge browser just like you have the google chrome browser exactly so they unveiled a new version and this new version will be powered by a higher version of the popular ai chatbot called chat gpt now this will help microsoft challenge its main rival google which recently introduced its own conversational ai tool called bard the company said that following the integration of the ai to the search engine and the browser will provide a now new experience for browsing the web and finding information online this announcement is coming barely a day after google announced its bard to rival chat gpt as the battle of ai intensifies <sighs> what do you have to say about this in case you missed it microsoft last month extended its partnership with chat gpt and right now i think they are like 
the sole sole investor in this whole open ai for chat gpt and they're introducing a lot of the technologies developed by open ai across their products and services in some live demos yesterday microsoft showed the new bing displaying traditional search results side by side with annotations and an ai chat interface the company showed a number of example searches for recipes for travel tips shopping for furniture you know much more than that in one demo, Bing was asked to create an itinerary for each day of a five-day trip to Mexico, Mexico. And the question was answered by the chatbot describing the itinerary alongside links to sources for the information. Like, this is mad crazy, I would say. Okay, you know how excited I was yesterday when all of this came up? Yes, how excited I was. This is moving to the next level. Trust me, you haven't seen this before. You haven't heard of this before. You know how excited it was? Everyone was when the whole search engine thing was you know becoming a thing you should be pretty much more excited i mean this is next level thing mastercraft and you know please help us better describe it choose us for 100 percent tech africa tech radio Oh yes, that's what we are, Africa Tech Radio. This is Tony's Tech Side. Now, away from all of that excitement, trust me, AI is the Edmo in the game. Yes, it's literally what will power anything and everything else moving forward. And at the base of it, and the basics of it, is data. Mm -hmm. Yes, data is king. That's exactly what we call someone right around here. I wouldn't say more than that. Now, SpaceX is now in Rwanda too, just like Nigeria. We don't know when it's coming to South Africa, ZA. Two fingers in the air. We don't know when, but it's in Nigeria. And the Rwanda Space Agency just announced that Starlink has been licensed and approved to provide internet services and high performance connectivity to Rwanda through its constellations of low Earth orbit LEO LEO satellites. Now, this Starlink is not supposed to oust other existing internet providers in the country, but to augment and advance their services and serve as backup as opposed to, you know, previous infrastructure. When Starlink is expected to begin operations in the first quarter of 2023 and would ensure connectivity capability for undeserved and remote areas in the country. But come on, the cost, underserved and remote areas. I don't know if they can afford it, but something that they can afford would be the AFDV's fashionomics in Africa Incubator and of course do we get the chance to win ten thousand dollars yes this fashionomics africa online incubator and accelerator program is in its second edition and it's accepting applications now it's meant to give you the tools training and resources that you need to expand your business in the fashion industry it's hosted by the africa development bank and the goal is to recognize african fashion firms that will change the way we create use and recycle clothing as well as promote more environmentally friendly consumer behavior who can apply if you're at least 18 years of age of course you should have a proof of age because it will be required um, you're a fashion entrepreneur working in the textile apparel and accessory industries in africa you must adopt environmentally friendly and sustainable practices you must have an african passport reside in an african country have an id such as a passport national id or voters card issued by an african country priority be given to people within 18 to 35 women-led fashion businesses and you must have started a fashion company and work within you know that industry accessories jewelry clothes textile apparel applications from recently established companies are highly encouraged and a business registration certificate of course will be required what are you gunning for ten thousand us dollars most innovative and sustainable brand let us go and then of course you have a, a fashionomics africa certificate you would also have access to a network of media insiders and industry experts you'd have you know your story published finalists would also have the opportunity to receive a promotion package to advertise their brand or certificates a branding case that's a logo color palette fonts all of those things email signature things like that and something that is also worth mentioning is the fact that firms have started signing up to the 4D Work Week Pioneer Pilot in South Africa. This is supposed to begin in March 1st, 2023, and companies and firms have started signing up for it. So if you're thinking of anything like that, you can send us a message at Africa Tech Radio at ATEC Radio. We would connect you to the firm. 
that's pilots in this or you can also take a listen to our podcast on the 4d work week just search for 4d work week on the website or anywhere else you find your you listen to your podcast 4d work week in africa is africa ready for the 4d work week and it'll be easier for you to actually get it Mm -hmm. now the last story i'll be sharing which is really important is from partech it's a global vc firm venture capital firm with several funds and they have just reached the close of Partech Africa 2, which is at 245 million pounds. And this is the largest Africa focused fund yet. The firm focuses on early and growth stage startups across the continent. And Partech 2 is one of the three funds that Partech, which is the global venture capital firm, launched in the last two years. First was a $750 million growth fund and a $100 million seed fund which targeted various markets and industries globally. This is also a sequel to Partech Africa 1. The first fund was announced in 2018 and closed at $143 million. Yeah, so this is really big. And if you're wondering why is this important, well, Partech's first African fund invested in 17 startups at Series A and B stages across nine countries that operate in 27. And some of those that they have funded already include TradePod, Yoko, Reliance, Number, among a few other startups oh yes i intentionally missed out wave the value that won uh, the unicorn right the unicorn wave from senegal yes partech invested in them too so i think microsoft and google are literally just going for each, each other's necks on the streets of artificial intelligence and i hope that there is respect going both ways and that we also think of human beings who would use these ai technologies that we're thinking around and we can put ethics into work just like we're you know working on a report and things like that on the continent i hope that as they you know run in the race of who is going to get there first that we understand that it's much more important to put a human first in everything that we do the respect for what is human mm-hmm. hola mi day and reminisce i'll be back in a bit this is Africa, Africa Tech Radio. Okay, so that's how we end the day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying on this side of tech with me. I'm here every weekday, 9 a.m. GMT plus 1, 9 a.m. West African time till about midday. You know, everything continues here. Everything tech, everything here literally continues. But then I'm happy. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot say thank you enough. So, yes, thank you once again. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com.